Shalom Akim. Shalom Yashadala. First off, I'd like to say, Kahalayam La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Natan Mashanakabad La Hazakwanyam Shal Yashadala, Wa Shalom, Wa Ahab La Bakayar Shal Yashadala. All praises to Yahawa, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Yahawa Shai, His only begotten Son. Give double honors to the apostles, apostles, Salakia, and elders of Great Millstone, these men that are that are giving us this truth in in sincerity, man. Um, I'm gonna be going into scriptures about the end and the beginning. You know, it's always calm before the storm, like the brother Yai had had mentioned. It's always calm before the before the storm, man. And right now, it may not seem to many that it's calm, but trust in the scriptures, it is extremely calm compared to what's gonna be coming soon. You know, brothers are already feeling it. You know, they're already coming after the brothers. They're already trying to shut the brothers down, you know, and I'm going to be going into 2nd Ezra chapter 6 and I'm just basically going to be talking about what, what's going on recently and what we're going to be seeing, man. So I'm going to start off at 2nd Ezra 6 chapter 12. I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens. Right, he's speaking to to our Lord, man. Yahabashim Yahabashai. You know, show us those tokens, man. Those tokens are, are like, uh, you know, whenever, like, for instance, a token of gratitude. You know, they, they show you something, right? Uh, that that token. That's what we're. That's what we want. So, what is that token that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has shown us? Whereof thou showest me part of the last night, right? What's that last night? Also, who comes in the night, right? Yahweh Shai is going to come like a thief in the night, man. Not literally saying that it's going to be at night. But none of us are going to see it coming. So he answered and said unto me, Stand up on thy feet and hear mighty, hear a mighty sounding voice. It shall be as it were a great motion. But the place where thou standest shall not be moved. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid. For the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth is understood. So these things that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is showing us, man, we're going to be seeing an increase in persecution. We're going to see an increase in, in people falling out of the truth. We're going to see an increase in many things, man. And Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai, they don't do things all of a sudden, man. They do things in a timely manner. You know, uh, uh, so and steady wins the race, how people say. Well, that's how we have to be, man. We have to be s slow and st not, not necessarily slow, like slacking. You know, we have to be steady to win this race, right? This is why we're doing this, because we're trying to win this race. We're trying to be of that elect. You know, Lord willing, that we are part of that elect. You know, going out here to the highways and the hedges, following the commandments to the best of our abilities. You know, and like one of the brothers had mentioned before, we, we can't follow exactly all the commandments, right? There's There's commandments that that we can follow. There's commandments that we can, um, uh, how, how did he say it? There's commandments that we can follow. There's commandments that we can't follow, man. You know, there's commandments that we can follow, like don't eat pork, something simple like that, man, comes a long way. Don't eat pork. Not only is it beneficial to your body, because I have noticed changes in my body Whenever I stopped eating uh, pork, catfish, uh, shrimp, lobster, 
those type of deals. Whenever I started, uh, whenever I stopped eating that type of food, um, I noticed a change in my body, man. It was cleaner, you know, from the outside. But it started out with a spiritual uh, a birth, a rebirth, you know, being born again. That spiritual minded person that I started becoming, it started reflecting through the body. So the body started reflecting also a cleanness, a much more clean person, you know. And it's not just like this Christian doctrine that they like to push that you have to be loving everybody to be, you know, accepted. And just by accepting in, in the Lord, um, you're forgiven. And then these people live a day to day life like they got everything made, like they don't need to be following the commandments, which the scriptures tell you otherwise, you know. But everything in this earth is going to be understood, man. When Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai comes back, everything will be completely understood by the man that he chose. You know, so everything is steadily happening where things are going to be increased. You know, like I said, persecution. That's the main one. Because from persecution come the people that are going to be falling out. And come the people that are going to be standing up for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai boldly. And while they stand up boldly, the cowards are going to be running, man. Everybody else is going to be running. Right? The wicked fleeth when no man pursueth. But the righteous, uh, basically the righteous stand up boldly. And that's what, that's what these elect men are going to be doing. They're going to be standing up righteously for the name of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, while the wicked are going to be running away, trying to, trying to wish that the, the earth would just bury them, man. Because they know what's coming. Continuing on verse 16, and why? Because the speech of these things trembleth and is moved, for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed. You know, and, and talking about the end, there's brothers, I just watched a video, there's brothers in Jamaica, man, and they're, they're, they're going through some things too. And then there's these articles that are, that are calling us hate groups. You know, they're calling us hate groups because we worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and we tell the truth. What, am I your enemy because I have told you the truth? You know, just like the scriptures say, we are we are looked at somebody as, as a body of evil. And that's what these men at, at Great Millstone are, are looked at, man. They're looked at as, a, as great uh, evil. And why? Because we, they don't accept the truth. They're afraid of the truth, Right. Just like the scriptures say, speak to us smooth things. They want to hear prosperous words. They want to hear words that makes them want to get up in the morning, go to church. And after they get out of church, they feel all happy and proud. You know, but the Lord hates that, man. The Lord hates uh, being when, when you're proud. You know, the Lord doesn't want you to to go out and, and do things just so you can go and tell other people, yeah, I did this, this and that and make yourself feel better. You know, that's not what the scriptures are about. They're not about making you feel better, man. They're about making you better. You know, there's a big difference. Whenever you're a better person to when you feel better. Feeling better represents proudness and ego. Being better is being humble. And that's exactly what these Christians are not. A lot of these people are not humble. And, then, and it reflects Especially when it, when we talk about the scriptures, they want to bring out, you know, oh, God, God loves everybody. So I'm saved because I was baptized through water. But what does scripture say? Very, very, um, verily, I baptize, you know, this is John speaking. And when he says, verily, I, I baptized you through the water. But somebody greater than him whose latches he is not um, worthy to unlatch is going to baptize us through what? Through the spirit, man. And that's what you see at these at these men of these men from Great Millstone. They're baptized from the spirit, man. And if you match up how they act compared to the prophets of old, you can see a, 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 a similarity just so great. A great similarity between those men and these men. It's a it's hardly any difference, man. You think everybody loved Jeremiah 
whenever he was out there in the in the in the city prophesying the downfall of of Jerusalem they were trying to put him to death man because he was speaking about these things because he was saying that Jerusalem was going to fall these people wanted to put him to death man you think they liked Isaiah and the best example do you think that they liked Yahweh Shai? You think these Christians, if they were living in that time, or, or if Yahweh Shai came down and this was that time, you think these people would, would be looking up at Yahweh Shai like, wow, that's our Lord, that's our Savior? They wouldn't, man. And that's the sad truth, because through the reincarnation, those same people are here today, and they're looking at us like we're, we're, the, we're the villains. Just like they looked at Yahweh Shai. They're looking at us like all oh, these men think that they're prophets, just like they looked at the prophets when Yahweh Shai was here. Right? They persecuted those prophets and they killed them off. And why? Because they thought those people were going off, man. And that's what they're trying to do with, with these men at Great Millstone. They're trying to knock them down just because they don't agree with, with their philosophy. Just because they don't agree with loving everybody like this fake Christian doctrine likes to push. And that's not true, man. If you read the scriptures, you would know who the end of the world is and who the beginning of the world is. And you would have read that long time ago through Genesis. You would have read it because everything was symbolic. Not only did it happen literal, but it's also symbolic for the future. Because one, two nations, it, it, even, it even explains it to you, man. It breaks it down by itself. Two nations are in thy womb. And the younger will be greater than, than, than the older. Than the oldest one. Who's the oldest one? Esau. Is there, a, is there an end to people? There isn't, man. The scriptures even, even verify that. The scriptures tell you there is no end to people. There is no end. Even to the ones that were before them. So Esau and his lineage is still here in the earth today just like the Israelites, man. And who are those Israelites? Who are the children of God? Who are the sons of God? Those elect men. 12,000 from each tribe. Right? That's Israel. The children of Israel. Who's Israel? Jacob, man. Jacob. These Jakes out here in this world. That's Jacob. That's Israel. Those are the 12 tribes. And how do you how do you how do you know who the twelve tribes are, man? How do you know if this person is Israel? You know you gotta try the spirit by the spirit. So if they're out here doing the work, and what's the work? Going out to the highways and the hedges, like the Lord commanded us, right? Doing doing the commandments to the best of your abilities. Like I said, there's some that you can do, some that you can't. And the example that the brother used for commandments that you can't use is for things like um, when you do something, you were supposed to be put to death if you broke one of the laws. Well, if you see one of your kids break one of those laws, you can't put your kid to death, man. <laughs> you know, the best thing you can do is show them the way. If they want to veer off, then that's their fault. That blood does not, not fall on you, man. Because you, you did the best that you could. Yahweh Wah, Yahweh Shai did not choose that person. So even family members, parents, fathers, brothers, cousins, best friends. If they do not choose to follow this truth, you know, it's not your fault. You show them by example, right? That's what a leader does. If you want to be a king... You have to lead by example, man. You can't just be bossing people around like these people do at, at, at jobs. They want to boss everybody around. They want to be telling them, okay, you go over there and you do this, you do that, and I'm going to sit right here and I'm just going to watch. That's not how we do it, man. That's not how you do things, right? A boss orders people around. A leader shows by example. So how is, is a leader in the kingdom of heaven going to be leading? How is the king going to be? He's going to be out here in these highways, in these hedges. He's going to be following the commandments to the best of his abilities. 
He's going to be fasting. He's going to be praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Bashem Rakhakudash. He's going to be doing what's expected of him by Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai. And what's expected of, of us is, is to be uh, spiritual, to be faithful. And with faith comes works. Simple as that. Spiritual, faithful, and works. So who is Israel? Returning to my, to my point. Israel is the one that's going to be out here being faithful. That's going to be true with the true doctrine. And doing the works. That's exactly who Israel is going to be. So for those people that want to say that only the Negroes are Israel. Where's your works, homie? You know, if you want to talk about, about, about being only Negroes. Where's your work? Are you following the law, statutes, and commandments? Are you going to the highways and the hedges? Or are you just one of those YouTube trolls that wants to talk about other people when they themselves do not, not, do, not do the work? What did Yahweh Shai say to people like that, man? Right? Why are, you trying to, why are you trying to help somebody else when you're not even helping yourself? You're supposed to seek your own salvation through fear and trembling, man. And that's how we also get people to, to come into this truth, man, through fear and trembling. That's how you do the work, through fear and trembling. So for those people out on YouTube and on these on the social media and for these Christians talking bad about uh, the brothers, the Akim, you know, where's your work, man? All I see is one man standing. You know, all I see is one man standing in front of hundreds, sometimes thousands of viewers and the viewers are just listening. And what are those viewers doing when they leave that church, man? Where's the urgency of, of being in this truth? There is no urgency, man, because they, they're speaking deceits, man. They don't want to speak prophecy. Because if, if a man speaks prophecy and that thing does not come to pass, that man's a false prophet. So what are you really doing, man? Those are the cherry pickers. Those are the cherry pickers that people should be pointing out. But they don't because Israel has, hasn't been like that, man. Israel has always been about their own thing. Israel never never worries about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. And I'm not even gonna say Israel, I'm gonna say these two thirds. Two thirds in these these heathen never worry about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They're always worried about their own thing, man. They go to church after church, they go to the mall, they go do their own thing. Like nothing, man. Like it's never gonna end. They continue doing their, their deeds, man. Because they were given to them. Right? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gave them to their to their lusts. So they continue to lust, man. So as for us, we're not supposed to be going out there and, and door to door, knocking on people, telling them to come into this truth. We're not supposed to be changing up how we're, we're saying the scriptures just because people don't want to accept how they're hearing it. You know, for, for those people commenting on, on, on brothers' um, videos, Say maybe you shouldn't say it like this. Maybe you should you should say it like that. Maybe you shouldn't be like this. Maybe you should be like that. Maybe you shouldn't curse. And, and so-called curse word is not even a curse word, man. It's more like an expression. You know, because what what is a curse, man? When you're cursing somebody, an actual curse. A curse word is not a curse. It's, it's not really cursing somebody, man. But if you want to talk about the brothers doing a better job, how about you go out to the highways and the hedges, you learn, you study, you read, you do the work, man. Do the work so you're not found naked. Be clothed in that righteousness, man, that, that beautiful garment. So continue in verse 17. And it happened that when I had heard, I stood up on my feet and hearkened, right? You're supposed to hearken to the Lord, man. If you hear these words, these, these, man, these words are so beautiful. If you hear these beautiful words, man, you're not supposed to be stiff-necked. You know, the, the brother brought it out uh, two weeks ago. We went out and, and he said that these people are supposed to be like palm trees, man. 
you know, and I was visualizing everything he was saying, soaking it up. Because if you're like a regular tree, man, if you're just another regular tree out here and that hard wind hits, you're snapping. You know, you, you're a stiff necked person. You're just like those trees. And that neck is going to break, man. That neck is going to snap whenever Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is coming back. Whenever, they, whenever he comes back, your neck is going to snap. Just like those trees, man. And the men of the Lord are going to be like those palm trees, like the brother was explaining. Those palm trees know how to adjust to that wind, man. You know, we're supposed to be as harmless as a dove and as wise as a serpent. So when that wind hits, we already knew it was coming, man. We've been watching. We've been observing. We've, we've remained innocent through the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Though I be rude in speech, not in, yet not in law, knowledge, man. This knowledge is more important than, than your feelings. When Yahweh Shai comes back, you think he's going to be going through people? And and destroying some people and, and some people whenever they start crying, he's gonna he's gonna look at you and say, Oh, I have mercy on you. No, man. That time of mercy was early. It's been given to us. For almost two thousand years, that time of mercy has been ha has been here. And who received it? Who received mercy? No one yet. But who hearkened to the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? Only these men at Great Millstone, man. So continuing on verse 17, and behold, there was a voice that spake and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters, man. That's, that's the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. That's that power. And it said, behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Who is he visiting? Bahasham Rakakwadash, man. Who else says Bahasham Rakakwadash besides uh, Great Millstone? Nobody, man. Like the Apostle Tahar said. Like the Elder Tahar said. <laughs> when he was talking about all these other camps, he said, You want to say Bahasham Rakakwadash. You want to say it, and they do, man. Because they know who speaks the truth. Those that say that are in the truth, they know who speaks the truth. Because just look at their works, man. You think these men are out here actually doing bad things, putting curses on people? No, man, they're not putting curses on people. We're out here preaching this truth, man. And for the same reason that we're trying to gather the elect to feed the flock. And whenever that flock is, is, has, has had that, that knowledge, that wisdom, that understanding... We're going to be scarcely saved by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Simultaneously, the whole world, by this world, I mean this kingdom. And by this kingdom, I mean Esau, right? Because he's the firstborn. And that kingdom that comes is Jacob, Israel. So this whole place is going to be destroyed, man. And whenever you guys claim that you didn't know, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is going to look at you and he's going to tell you. And then will you know that a prophet was among you? And that's when that fear is going to come into you. When Yahweh Bashim Yahushai comes back. Let's continue on verse 18. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh. And that's right now, man. And to visit them that dwell upon the earth through the Holy Spirit by Hashem Rakakwadash. And through that Holy Spirit, what have we received? This knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Starting from, from the elder Tahar. And we'll begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that I've heard unjustly with their unrighteousness, and when the affliction of Sion shall be fulfilled. You know, he, he's, he's asking things of you, man. So what is Yahweh Bashem Yahushai asking of you? To go out to the highways and the hedges, present your body as a living sacrifice, 
you know, under all these elements. Right? We're supposed to be doing the, the commandments righteously, judging people. Right? You're supposed to righteously be judging. You can't just unrighteously judge, man. That's why Yahweh Shai told that, uh, was, was talking, when he was talking, he said, you know, uh, roughly paraphrasing, you know, why are you going to try and change change that man next to you, man? Why are you going to try and change your brother? Why are you going to try and change change your father? Why are you going to try and change anybody? You know, why are you going to try and take off that, that speck that's in their eye, man, when you have a big old log in your eye? How can you ask of change if you don't even, not even yourself, you don't even uh, practice what you preach? You know, same thing, he said the same thing, same thing to the Pharisees, man. The Pharisees were out there talking about doing this and that, but they never did any of it. So that's what Yahweh Shai was, was, was telling them, man. And he was cutting them with the scripture, same way that these Edomites... Same way that these two-thirds are being cut with the script scriptures currently. And we see that because the brothers are being persecuted. And like I said, it's only going to be, it's only going to get worse, man. And by worse, I mean better. Because when that affliction starts, and it starts getting heavier on, 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 these, on these men from Great Millstone, guess what? That means that the end is near, man. And it should push us forward to do even more. And keep pushing us forward to do even more. And keep pushing us forward to do even more, man. You know, the, the, the more they, they afflict you, the more they hate you, the better, man. Because we see how close we're getting to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And it's beautiful. You know, if you're still thinking fleshly and it scares you, Man, we got, we got to, you got to start changing up, man. You got to be spiritual, and the Father seeketh such to worship Him, man, through spirit and in truth, because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is a spirit, man. And when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then will I show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament. Right, right now, currently. These books are being opened, man. These books are being opened. And we're singing this like it's a new song. You know, these, these, man. I mean, the scriptures just explain everything to you, man. For those that have, that have that truth, that spirit of truth, man. The spirits, just, the, the, the scriptures just speak to you through the spirit, man telling you how these books are open and you look around and you look at these churches and you, you can tell that those books aren't being opened, man. You know, they're, they're just they're just trying to rip out pages from that sealed book, man, because their eyes are, are, are blind. You know? The, these so-called preachers, they, they don't... Man, I, I said this the other day and I heard a couple brothers say it too. They don't like going into Revelation, man. They don't like going into Revelations. I think I think through the many years, through 20 plus years that I have gone to churches, I think only one time that I hear somebody bring out Revelation. One time. You know, and it wasn't it wasn't anything big as far as prophecy. It wasn't anything you know, that these men at Great Most don't do. It wasn't anything like that. But they were speaking about revelations. You know, about getting better. But you see these people, and they don't want to be doing the work, man. They put on a mask. You know, that that's a real cult right there. All these churches, all these false religions... Those are the real cults, man. They put on masks. You know, they put on these pretty masks to go to those churches, to those temples, through those religions. And as soon as they leave, man, they take that mask off and they go right back to who they were. That's a cult. 
That's a cult, man. These men at Great Millstone, that is not a cult. That is truth. Because we follow this, this book, this truth with everything, man. We put our lives for it. You know, and even with all our righteousness, man, we're still, we're still as dirty rags. So these books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all together. Man, I, I believe I said in, in like three videos ago that I had made, three or four videos that I had made. It's beautiful. You know, it's beautiful because I'll, I'll be talking about one thing, you know, not not paying attention to, to uh, uh, what's it called? Not paying attention to to anything else but the scriptures, man. And then I'll hear a brother talking about the same thing the day before. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't even hear this. This is beautiful. This is exactly what, what I wanted to get to. And he'll go into a deeper meaning of what that means. And then a brother that same hour or the next day or three days later or a week later, he'll talk about the same thing. And it's beautiful, man, whenever I see stuff like that. It's beautiful because you could tell who the truth is working with. Right? We're not working with the truth. The, or Salakia. We're, we're not the truth through our own understanding, but this is the truth through Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and through the Holy Spirit. That is how the truth works, man. The truth is given to us by Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We do not give the truth. And we all see together, man, as one. We're one body in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. The women <laughs> with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old, and they shall live and be raised up. Man, we, we, we you can see it now, man. You can see it now. This world is wicked. This world is wicked. And some of these children that speak when they're a year old, guess what? Some of these men that are 36, 37, some of these men that are 20-something years old, they could still be of a year old, man. I'm still only a couple months old. Once I was reborn in this truth, man, I'm only a couple months old seeing the world how it really is. You know, taking those blinds off and reprogramming yourself to understand this truth given to you by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And we see also these these men that come in, you know, that are being brought forth, that are a couple months old in this truth, and they fall out real quick, man. You could tell truth from truth and false from false, man. That's how Yahweh Shai is separating the sheep from the goats. That's how Yahweh Shai, in, like it said in Jeremiah uh, 8 and 10, I believe, when it talks about, um, O oh, Yahweh, thy know thou knowest my heart, and thou triest me towards you. You know, he's trying us towards him. You know, he's like a, like a carnal father punishes his children, you know. But Yahweh was doing this spiritually, man. He's chastening us. And through that, he's trying us to grow in this faith. And he's pulling us towards him. And then it says in Jeremiah 8 and 10, um, pull, you know what? Let me go ahead and get it. Salakia. Oh, Salakia wasn't eight and ten. 
Khan. Let me read this real quick. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. You know, this is how, how we distinguish Esau from Jacob, man. Esau from Jacob. Because this is talking about Israel. Israel is going to be, you know, Israel is going to be given unto these Edomites, man. Therefore, will I give their wives unto others, right? These Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Guess who their wives were given unto? They were given unto others, man, these other nations. And who is that other nation? Right? That's the end. The end right there, man. The end of the world. Esau's world, man. These heathen. These pagan for everyone that from the least even unto the greatest is given unto covetousness, man. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. And that's what we see in these churches like I was mentioning earlier. These men are dealing falsely, man. These are false, false prophets, man. You know? These are the men that are that are giving us um, this this bad understanding, this this false uh, doctrine, man. Let me go to Jeremiah 7, verse 34. Then will I cause to seize from the cities of Judah, right over there in Jerusalem, in Israel, and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth. Who is that voice of mirth, man? And the voice of gladness. Who is our voice of gladness? The voice of the bridegroom. Who is our bridegroom, man? That's Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai was seized from, from Judah, from Jerusalem, from Israel, man. Right? That's that voice of mirth, that voice of gladness, man. That's the voice of the bridegroom. And the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate, man. And, and guess who's in that land right now? It's not Israel. Because then the scriptures wouldn't be true. But the scriptures are true. And we're faithful that, that it is true, man. A hundred percent. So who is that talking about? If not him, then who else? It's talking about Esau, man. Esau is that end. And we all know it, right? So from there. So lock you. Let me see. I believe it was 10. It's 10, 12. Con. The water. It's 10 and 3. Jeremiah 12. Salakia. I kept on saying 10. Jeremiah 12, verse 3. But thou, O Yahweh, knowest me. Right? Yahweh knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee. Right? So he's he's trying us, man. He's trying he's trying the men men of the Lord. If you say that you're for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, he's gonna try you, man. He's gonna see how you do. You know, just like in a soccer team. Or in a basketball team. Or in any type of team, man. This is a team. You know our body is a team. Our body has to work together, right? What do they say about, about team members? You have to work together, man. So if you're you're gonna you're gonna try out for a team, right? We're in the tryouts currently. Even if you've been in this for two months, three months, four months, seven months, eight years, twenty years. You know we're being tried. So if Yahweh was trying us to, to pull his us toward him does that mean he's he's trying us just to make us worse he's trying us just to to bring us affliction no man he's trying us to bring us that peace man that rest 
Because if we endure to the end, that's, that's when we're saved, man. You know, he's, he's trying us toward him. Our hearts, our minds, right? Because our hearts are deceitful, man. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Who is he going to be pulling out? The elect. He's pulling out the elect for that day of slaughter, man. And he uses that word slaughter. That doesn't mean he's going to come down and slap a couple people in the face. He's going to come down and slaughter, man. He's going to slaughter those heathen nations. Those people that are going to persecute us. Because it's going to get worse. Right? Because revenge is for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Revenge belongs to him. So in this current world, man, what I like to do, this is just myself. I like to be, you know, giving and kind. Not because I'm following this love doctrine, man, but because when I, when I pray and I say, forgive me, Lord, you know, forgive me, Yahweh. You know, whenever uh, how, how it states in, in, in the scriptures, in Spanish, you say, uh, uh, Salakia, let me try and remember. Perdónanos como nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. You know, perdona nuestras ofensas. Forgive our offenses, man. Our offenses that we do to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Because we still sin. You know? And we might do it accidentally. But that's why we say forgive our offenses, man. Like we forgive those that offend us. You know? For, we forgive our debts. Like we forgive, forgive our, our debtors. You know? And, and that's why I like to... I like to do that, man. Because I have a reason to say, um, forgive me. You know, because there's these, there's these people, even your own family, man. These people that say that they're, they're your family. Even them, man, they'll, they'll turn on you. You know, like, for instance, I had this niece and she needed help because the man that she was with you know, she's pregnant, or was. She already had her child, but she was pregnant at that moment. And, you know, this this man was just, he was, he's a, well, he's, yeah, he's a, he's a bad kid, you know. And he basically kicked her out, man. He kicked her out of the house with, with her being pregnant. Right, who, who does that, man? Who kicks out their woman for no reason? You know, even if even if she gets on your nerves, man. You know, you, you don't you don't kick out a woman with a child like that, man. You know, if, if she's the one that you you say you're dealing with or you're with or that you love, like he used to say, you know, he would tell her that he loved her. But he kicked her out and she was reaching out, man. She reached out to the family. So you know, I told my wife, I was like, go ahead and, and let her come over here, man. I was like, just let her come over here and give her her own room, her own space. You know, so she can, so she can, um, <laughs> give her own space, you know, for her and the kid. So I brought all her stuff, man. I even called into work one day so I can bring all her stuff over here, you know, you know, just giving. Not expecting anything back, man. You know? And this person, she decided to to call him back so she can have or so he can have her back. You know, and he did she did it behind our backs. So, and you know, we wouldn't have mind, man. I mean, yeah, it would have been messed up for her to go back with him. You know, we would we might have disapproved, but you know, that's her life. But she was doing everything sneakily, you know? She was being sneaky about everything. And while I was asleep, she she rang the doorbell 
because she was saying she was staying at her she was saying that she was staying at her friend's house that they can take care of her and the baby you know like if we couldn't and she came home she she came to my home one day while I was asleep in the room and you know the kids saw that it was her so they thought it was okay to open the door so they did and she told them go ahead and open the garage so they did she didn't even go inside the house she went around she went through the garage got her stuff put it in her car she closed that garage man and she was gone she didn't even say bye to the kids she didn't she, nothing she didn't even tell us anything you know and she ended up going back with that guy well she was she was talking bad things about him you know and so we disapproved of him and then she turns around when she leaves and tells him that we disapproved of him so now they they don't even want to let us see the kid you know like like just people like that man so whenever i ask for forgiveness you know i have i have something that i have forgiven for as well you know but continuing you know and prepare them for the day of slaughter and that's what's coming to to all these people man these people that are just betraying one another just so they can get their own way and i was watching uh, a video also from the brother gabar over there in, in hawaii um he 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 had posted a video just just about two hours ago actually about how this edomite man was you know about to lose his house so he 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 brought up this scam to make it seem like he was a good person you know by by donating making it seem like he was good but in reality he was gaining profit so he can pay his house and still have money for himself you know that just shows you how wicked these people are man and that's exactly what's coming that's that slaughter man how is shy is coming back to slaughter man he's not here to 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 talk peacefully with people he's coming back with that two-edged sword man and he's coming back to slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter who is he preparing these elect men man these elect men yahweh bashim yahweh shai is preparing through the spirit going out to the highways and the hedges learning this truth growing in this truth strengthening them chastening them chastening them salakia so we go back to second Ezra chapter 6 And I'm going to start it off from 30. And these words said he unto me, I am to come shew thee the time of the night to come. Right? Like I was explaining. If that will pray yet more and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. For thy voice is hard before the most high. Heard before the most high, Salakia. For the mighty hath seen thy righteous dealing, he hath seen also thy chastity, which thou hast had ever since thy youth. And therefore hath he sent me to show thee all these things, and to say unto thee, Be of good comfort, and fear not. Right? The Lord didn't give us that spirit of fear, man. And hasten not with the times that are past to think vain things, Right, just like Jake, Jake, man, Jake likes to think about the past a lot, you know, and I'll, I'll constantly feel like thinking about the past, and I have to brush it off, man. And sometimes it'll cons consume you, 
you know, so you, you can't be thinking about the past, man. You got to keep pushing forward. That thou mayest not ha hasten from the later times. And it came to pass after this that I wept again and fasted seven days in like manner that I might be fulfilled uh, the three weeks which he told me. And in the eighth night was my heart vexed, vexed like it with, with me again. And I began to speak before the Most High. For my spirit was greatly set on fire, and my soul was in distress. And I said, O Yahweh, thou speakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and saidst thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was perfect work. And then was the spirit, and the darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. Then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. Upon the second day thou madest the spirit of the firmament and the commandments of the part asunder, and to make the division betwixt the waters, and the one part might go up, and the other remaineth underneath. Upon the third day thou didst command the water should be gathered in the seven part of the earth, six part hast thou dried up. And kept them unto the intent of these some being planted of God and tilled might serve thee. Man, if if these if the waters listen to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, if the land listens to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, how much more us, man? You know, we're we're that we're that clay. And he is the potter. So he'll shape us however he pleases. He will shape you into whomever he pleases you to be. And that's something, something, you know, terrible to fall in whenever you, you fall out this truth, man. Whenever you give up. You know, whenever you hang up those boxing gloves, man. That's something terrible. That Yahweh Bashem Yahushai did not pick you. You know, and like I said in my previous video, even though, even though, even if, Salak, even if I'm not part of the elect, Lord willing, this thing ends soon. You know? Because this world is wicked, man. And that's just a sad truth. So if, if, the waters and the earth listen to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. How much more us, man? How much more us? You know? So I'm going to go to Second Ezra verse 12. I mean, Salaki, Second Ezra chapter 12. I'm going to go down to Salakia. All right, right here. I'm going to start at verse 26. And whereas thou sawest that the great had appeared no, one, no more, it signified that one of them shall die upon his bed, and yet with pain. For the two that remain shall be slain with the sword. For the sword of the one shall devour the other, but at the last shall he fall through the sword himself. And whereas thou sawest two fa uh, feathers under the wings passing over the head that is on the right side, it signifieth that these are they, whom the highest hath kept unto their end. This is a small kingdom and full of trouble, as thou sawest. And the lion whom thou sawest rising up out of the wood and roaring and speaking to the eagle and rebuking her for her unrighteousness with all the words which thou hast heard. This is the anointed which the highest hath kept for them for their wickedness unto the end. He shall reprove them and shall upbraid them 
with their cruelty. Man, this world is going to be destroyed, man. And you, you, you two-thirds, you heathen, y'all are all chosen too. Just like, just like the elect are chosen. But you're chosen for unrighteousness, man. And you're chosen to be made an example of. And that's exactly what Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is, is about to do, man. He's about to come back and he's going to make an example out of everybody. He's going to come down here and he's going to be slaughtering people. There's going to be death, pestilence, famine, famine, Zalakia. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening here, man. And the Most High is revealing this through the scriptures, right? This book that's being opened before the firmament. And we're seeing it, man. And we know this pertains to Israel. We know this pertains to Israel. The, the, the promises, right? This is a promise that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is making. Like in Revelations. When he talks about the end of the world, man. When he talks about the end of the world. He's, he's, he's promising us things, man. He's promising the elect to be, to be saved. You know? And those promises pertain to Israel, as stated in Romans, Romans 9. You know, that's who the covenants pertain to, as whom the promises pertain to. This is all for Israel, man. Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai have never changed. They've always been the same. They were the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So with that, Akim, I want to say Shalom. You know, stay in this truth. Fight that fight, man. You know, be, be, 